player 2 has joined the game. Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to episode 365 of the Two Player Co-op Podcast. As always, I'm one of your host here, Kevin, along with my remote brother from my mother, Sean. Uh, we doing? You're not doing fantastic. I got, I got my radio voice. You got your Christian Bale voice. If this is the first time you're ever seeing, hearing, or listening to us, this is the Two Player Co-op Podcast, where just about every couple weeks, two brothers get together to tell you everything you need to know about in the world of video games. If you like that, make sure you like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends, family, and everyone in Betwixt. If you only listen on audio services, that's cool too. Just give us a five-star review, thumbs up, or whatever your service does. If you really like us. You can go to patreon.com slash two player co-op where we got a lot of different benefits for you people, but the most popular is the $5 producer tier. You get the podcast live one day early on YouTube. You get a bonus episode every month and you get to watch us record the podcast live on YouTube as we are doing right now. Some of our patrons deserve a shout out, just like the man with the bar named after him, our patron saint, Mr. John Tingley, as well as our affiliates, Derek Bamford. James Solar, make sure you check out James Games and more on YouTube as well. And <clears throat> Mom. Also, our producers, Steve Appleton, Not Aunt Sue, Dustin Downs, and Chris Peralta. Make sure you check out PS Rewind on YouTube as well. If you like cool t-shirts and the like, I think you can still go to teespring.com slash stores slash two player co-op. And here we are, Sean. You're not great. I mean, you're great, but you don't feel great. I've been better. I'm supposed to be gone. I mean, I am going to Newfound Glory this weekend. I hope my voice is back by then so I can turn around and lose it again. I was going to say. I'm probably going to sound just as bad, if not worse, for the draft, but that's fine. Was it two years ago we went to the draft after the one chip challenge, or was that three years ago? Oh, well, I can look at the date. I think it was just two years. 2021. It was three years. Wow. Oh, wow. Is it possible we have to chip late? No. I would have sworn it was three years. I mean, two years. No. Time just means nothing now. Hmm. Um, This what weekend... What episode was it for? Two hundred? Was it two hundred? No. Two fifty, I guess. Fifty episodes. Yeah, it must have been two fifty. Maybe. Hmm. I'm also going somewhere this weekend. Where are you going? Six Flags. Uh, Taking the kiddos. St. Louis? St. Louis, yeah. Nice. If Noah can get off Friday, then we're going to leave Friday. If not, we're just going to wake up super early Saturday and get on the road and go. So I think they open up at 11. <clears throat> and Jess always buy every year she just buys like the... Uh, like the season pass, she gets the full DLC, you know, because it's only like a little bit more than just buying tickets for one day. So we're like, well, we got to go one more time. So let's go. So we're going. And when I think it's the little before. Yeah, I think so. Or maybe it was last year. No. When did you go before? I don't know. But like spring break, this maybe? isn't your first time this year. Mm -mm. I think it, it must've yeah. been spring break, but I don't know. Um, no, spring break, we went to L.A. I don't know when we went. Wait, so when are you going? Saturday and Sunday. Driving back, back Sunday. Sunday night. Yep. And it's the uh, last weekend they've got, because in St. Louis, they've got Six Flags regular, and then they've got Six Flags water park. And this is the last weekend that the water park is open. So we're like, all right. Jess is like, she's just going to sit. Uh, she, we're gonna, she wants to just rent a cabana or whatever and sit by the wave pool and I can go ride rides with everybody. I'm like, that, that doesn't sound like fun to me, but you know, the kids, the big kids are old enough. They can take care of themselves. Those cabanas are always so stupid. Like I looked into them even at great wolf lodge, which it's indoors. I mean, exactly. Why would you even want a cabana? But I'm like, Hey, that means that'll probably be pretty cheap and whatever. I figured it'd be like 60, maybe 80 bucks a day. It was like $300 a day. I'm like, Seriously? and it doesn't come with like, yeah. And it came with like nothing, maybe like some bottles of water and like a TV you could watch. But like, I don't know. I figured indoors, like if it's 50 bucks a day, like I could see doing that. But 
I don't know. That's crazy. So I assume <laughs> probably more. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's not worse at six flags, but six of flags. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's stupid. Especially yeah. Great Wolf Lodge, where it's like 120% humidity in there. And it's like there you kind of right. just want to be in the water because it's so just uncomfortable. <clears throat> yeah. I really don't have any any other witty banter. And we got a lot to cover. So you want to just jump into it? What do you got? Oh, I was just gonna say, uh next week. Oh, so yeah. we record next week. It'll be interesting because we'll have our fantasy draft recap, but um yeah i don't know i don't really have anything we might be able to do our whole a whole podcast about the fantasy draft who knows sean what have you been what have you been playing these past two weeks um i got the tunic platinum i got some thoughts i don't think that's a very good game it does some cool stuff. I never finished it. Like man. the whole thing with the the instruction manual and mm -hmm. like there's some crazy in-depth puzzles and stuff. Like it's got some cool concepts, but like it's just not it wasn't really fun. Like it was hard, but just like unnecessarily hard. It's like somebody just flipped the difficulty switch on. Uh, I don't know how far you got, but there was some boss that I fought like on top of a tower yep. or something. And that was the last, <laughs> after that, I didn't beat another boss without easy mode on. I didn't beat uh, him without doing easy mode. That that was where I turned it on. So I was like, I'm just yeah. saying this crap. And then did you go to the part where you, you're all of a sudden you're in this weird, like spaceshipy futuristic looking place. And there's like all the pink goo. Oh uh, man. There's these weird little I remember I them remember. looking like xenomorphs or something that like crawl out of the goo. And when they hit you, they don't just take your health, they lower your max health. And oh, like, that sounds the game familiar. is the game is just not built for like fun <laughs> combat. Like it's just so like you're you're fighting these dudes who are like flying across the screen and they are like big weapons and you're like swinging your little toothpick at him like yeah you either need a longer sword a <clears throat> wider attack Arc. faster attack something but when you're just like eh, eh, eh. like there were some enemies later on i'm like i can barely even hit this guy because i can't get close and he clobbers me anytime i do get close and i'm like this is not i uh i know in my mind, it was going to be very, very similar to Death's Door. Death's Door was hands down a better game, like yeah. across the board. And like <laughs> I said, this game was cool. It was beautiful, but like the difficulty was just unnecessarily high. And it's just, I don't know. I think was there's it? a good game in there, but like. Mm -hmm. They need they need to change the kind. You need to be able to move faster, or like I said, have a bigger sword or a faster sword, or like a, I don't know. But it just it was not working for me. But I powered through and got the platinum. I don't remember. Can you do the platinum in one playthrough? I can't remember what it is. Um, is it just collect no. everything? Well, and... <laughs> technically, you could. Um, there's a trophy, which is the last one I got which was a terrible screenshot um, where you had to get there's a, you can get a gun. I don't know if you ever got the gun, mm -hmm. you can get a gun. And one of the trophies is to get the gun before you get the sword. Right. I think. Yeah. Before you get and your so first it's basically weapon. just like, yeah. yeah. So I looked up a guide and it's just like, go here, go here, go here. And then, and then just make a run for it and just grab it. Um, so in theory, you could do that on your first playthrough and then just backtrack to the beginning and yeah. play through normally so you're not all messed up. But um, I think it is possible in one playthrough, but even the way I did it, it was one playthrough and then an extra five minutes. Like, it wasn't bad. Yeah. Okay. What Would you say it was harder than Death's Door? Oh, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And I beat Death's Door using a friggin' umbrella. <laughs> the umbrella, yeah. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I got that. Um, I've been looking for something to play. I dove into Cult of the Lamb. Oh. It's interesting. I like it. It's a roguelike, I don't, right? Or light or something. Yeah, yeah. The combat part of it is pretty... James Solar. Straightforward. Uh, he was and, talking about Tunic. Sorry, I didn't see the chat till just now. Yeah. Um, the The combat stuff is pretty straightforward and honestly pretty... I wouldn't say simple, but it's not bad at all. Um, the cult stuff is kind of weird. Like there's these three different... Um, they're circles, but you can basically think of them as like bars that you have to keep up with like morale and cleanliness and that kind of stuff. So you gotta, every time you get back to your village, you have to make sure you preach a sermon and you have to talk to people. And if you give them gifts, they'll like you more and they can level up. And when they level up, you get more stuff from them and blah, 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 blah. It's not, it's a little complicated, but it seems like for the most part, it's just every time you go back there, do this, do this, do this, do this, and you're fine. Um, it's pretty fun. It seems like a relatively simple platinum, so I'll probably hit that. Really? I'm probably not going <clears> to... <throat> yeah. I always figured that game was going to be hard. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's... I mean, there's it, there's a difficulty select, which I feel like a lot oh, of roguelites okay. don't have, so that helps. Um, but yeah, I'm probably... With Brittany gone, I'm probably not going to play it again before Vampire Survivors comes out, and then once Vampire Survivors comes out, that's going to be my focus. If I have time, I'll pick up something that was just announced today. Yep, we'll get to that. And then not long after that, there's... Astro. Astro. And then not long after that, there's Plucky Squire. So I don't know when I'll get back into it. It's going to keep getting kind of moved down my priority (laughs) list, but it's fun. I've liked it so far. I was just going to check. Doesn't seem like the trophies have gone live yet for Vampire Survivors. But if I look at the achievements, survive 10 minutes, five minutes, fire one, level four, level this up, level that up, level this up, this, this, hold six. It seems like it's the kind of game that it might be a long platinum, but I don't think it's going to be that difficult because it seems like the kind of game from what I remember from the little I played on my iPhone, it's you can just kind of grind and grind and grind and grind and grind. And yeah, you may die many times before you're strong enough to beat this boss or whatever, but it's like you're constantly getting better. I mean, it's a roguelite. So it's like every time you play again, you're a little bit stronger than the last time. And so I don't know, unless it's something ridiculous where it's like beat the game without ever dying from the beginning. I mean, you know, they could do something crazy, but I could see it being a long platinum, but not necessarily difficult, but we'll see. The base game contains 140 different achievements with a 1,200 gamer score. And there's 12 DLC packs containing 80 more achievements and 420 game score. So I don't know what they're going to do. Man. So I don't know what they're going to do with the trophies. That's because I was like scrolling. I was like, not bad, not bad. And then I'm like, what the hell? Is this serious? Like... I've never seen a base game that had that many trophies. So I don't know if it's going yeah, to be the same. Crazy. 140? There, there's no way it's 140 to get the platinum. That doesn't make any sense. No. I don't think I've ever seen anything <clears throat> with more than like 50 or 60. Yeah. Oh. Um, right. But yeah, I think that's pretty much all I've played. Didn't you get another platinum? Or had you already gotten? I was that just last looking time? back because I thought I had two. The one before that was Lies of P, which I think I'd already talked about. So no, didn't you get that other the Always Game oh. or something? So I got strand, not stranded. What's it called? Shipwrecked. Death what was stranded? that game called? Mm-hmm. It's kind of oh, like the Link's Awakening looking game. Not Plucky Squire. The cat. The cat game. Cat Quest. No, the one where you. It's like the Link's Awakening <laughs> game that I said it was really short. Oh, that's right. The Zelda game. What? Yeah. So, oh, yeah, I guess my... I played that. I don't even remember what it was called. Stranded? No, it's something like... Castaway. Oh, what was the Tom Hanks... Castaway. Castaway. I was there say, you go. What's the Tom Hanks movie? 
Um, I beat it. I don't know that I'll get the platinum. You have to literally beat that game without dying. I mean, without dying on hard, which means without getting hit. And I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, but yeah, that's going to be even lower on my list than Bolt of the Lamb if I ever go back to it. But fun game, but I don't see me getting that platinum. Yeah, that's crazy. <clears throat> For me, um, still college football 25. Um, I won the national championship with Geneseo. Very proud of myself. And then in my second season. Are you getting Madden this year? No. No. I'll let James buy it seven years in a row or whatever he said it was. Um, and I've heard this year was especially kind of like, especially when you compare it to college football 25, like the only improvements they made to Madden from last year, other than a couple of new like small cut scenes, if you win the Super Bowl or something were things that they took from <clears throat> college football and brought over. But I saw one of the things angry Joe uh, was saying is like, what, what the hell the, one of the coolest things about college football 25 is the new revamped passing system. And you didn't put that in Madden. Like you brought over so much other stuff that's in college football, but you didn't bring over the passing system that everybody loves. Like what the hell? So no, I'm not, <clears throat> I, I don't need Madden when I know the giants are going to suck. If we draft Arch Manning here in a couple of yeah. years, then maybe I'll be there. But no, if the Giants aren't going to be any good, I just don't. And especially with college football, I'm having so much more fun with that. I think I want to start a dynasty with Syracuse too. But it goes back to the whole thing that it's just so annoying that like you can't create players and just put them. It, it's so stupid that they still haven't. I got to think they're going to patch that at some point. Like who cares? Who cares if like the, the players got paid their NIL money? Who cares if you can edit them or you can't? It, even if you can't edit them, let us create players and just put them on teams. It's so stupid that we can't. It makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. So stupid. But yeah, <laughs> still playing couch football. I think I'm over 41, 42 hours now, something like that. I don't know. Um, and then I had, I had a couple games. So Sean let me borrow a little game called Dark Souls 3. And it's just not clicking. Really? I don't know if I'm just Elden Ringed out or what. There, there's something about, I don't know if it's just because Elden Ring is so open that like now going back to something that's so restrictive, it just wasn't clicking for me. And I stopped playing it after like an hour. Like I got to where there was like the first shortcut and stuff, but then this, there's this one night that was just jumping around with it. it. It was just like, I'm just not having fun doing this. And then I decided to try Witcher three again. And because somebody was telling me that like, yeah, it doesn't play that great, but the story is so freaking good that it like overcomes all that. And I was like, well, I don't even remember how far I got the first time I did it. Um, so I started that up again, playing the PS5 version. I'd only played the PS4 version before, I guess. And it's not clicking either, man. I got about an hour into that. I'm in the prologue. I remember where I'm at now. Like the, the, the people in this town are like, Hey, Witcher, we need you to go kill this Griffin. And I was like, I remember doing this. <clears throat> I haven't gone to fight the Griffin yet because it's just not <laughs> even going in, in the prologue even going through and just running into a couple of regular enemies. They're not tough. They're not hard to kill or anything, but the combat, it, it, it just feels horrible. It just doesn't feel fun at <clears throat> all. And I'm like, I don't think I can do this either. I'm not going to play something just to like pass the time or because everybody says Witcher is great. I should love it too. There's stuff that got announced today that I would much rather play. So I think I'm kind of done with Dark Souls and with Witcher. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, I played the game for maybe an hour. And this was like five, four or five years ago. It was a long time now. Um, All I remember, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe I don't remember correctly, but all I remember is at least the way it seemed while I was playing it was I think you have two different swords, right? 
and one is for like this kind of enemy and one is for that kind of enemy. One's for like people and one's for ghouls or something. But like to me, they looked do those swords not look identical? The the hilt is like one of them, the hilt is straight, the other one it's more like a V. And that's the only difference. All I remember is I'm like, I don't know which one is which and what I'm supposed to use against who. And I, I was just I, right off the bat. I was like, I, I don't think I like this game, but that's like the only thing I remember about it. I mean, I feel like I should give it more of a shot than I did Red Dead because Red Dead, I was just bored out of my mind. And James says in the chat, he's heard the combat in Witcher 3 is clunky at first, but it gets better once you unlock more stuff. That's actually another thing that just made me think of. You start when you're going through the demo portion, when you're like, training and stuff you're learning your sigils or whatever your magic and stuff and it's like push l1 and then you can select this 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 or this and there's like five magics and i'm like this one makes the guy slow down this one gives you more defense this one does and i'm like i'm i'm already we're in the demo and i'm already overloaded with not being able to remember this stuff yeah and i haven't even got to the point where there's a million things on the map that i have to look at like I don't know. I, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do either of them. I don't yeah, know. It it didn't do it for me at all. But yeah, that's really all I've played. And like I said, there's there's stuff that got announced today I can't wait to play. Uh, I'll probably start those tomorrow is my guess. Um, but then I'm leaving this weekend, so I won't be able to get very far. But um, yeah, Dark Souls 3 and Witcher 3. Just not clicking. I definitely think I like Dark Souls 3 more, but I'm just like, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree was so freaking good, and I loved it so much, but there was a lot of beating my head against a wall in that game, and I don't I don't know if it's just that I'm just not mentally prepared to do this again, especially starting from scratch, starting at level 12 or whatever it is that you start at, you know? And yeah. I just don't know that I can do it right now. And then I think of what's coming out in a couple of weeks and I just picture Astro Bot having so much fun and he's like <laughs> flying around on a dual sense. And then here comes Kratos and boy. And I'm like, this is, this is, that's what I need right now. I think. So I don't know. Yeah. I think I'm done. <laughs> so that's it. Sean. I don't think it ever works, right? If I try to do the boom, 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 thing, so I'm not going to do that. But, Sean, let's go ahead and get to the news of the past two weeks. We actually have news to talk do about. It. This is this is why it's nice doing this every two weeks, because there's actually stuff to talk about. The first thing is near and dear to my heart. I don't know why I was not contacted to be part of these previews, but Metal Gear Solid Delta... Previews went live. At first, all I saw was a write-up on the PS blog. I was like, okay, I mean, this is from Sony. I don't really care what they say, you know. But then GameSpot, IGN, VGC, I think Screen Rant, and a few others. Like, a lot of people got to go hands-on with it and basically play through the Virtuous Mission. Basically through the, the beginning hour of the game. And we got a lot of information. There's a lot to cover here. <clears throat> Sean's voice is dying which doesn't matter because I'm going to take this. And I'm so, I woke up when I was reading all this stuff yesterday, I was, I was over the friggin' moon. I am so they're they're Everything they're saying is making me happy. Let's go through it. So first off, like I said, we got, uh, <clears throat> the PS blog post was the first thing I saw. And in there, they had new screenshots of the game where we see what the codec looks like. It looks beautiful. It looks just like the old one, just prettier. Um, one thing I didn't like at first and I'm like, it, it it's still kind of weird to me, but I don't really care because it's not that big a deal, but the health and the stamina, they look the same, but instead of being up in the top left, now they're down, at the, they're at the bottom middle, which is just weird yeah. to me because it's, <laughs> I, I don't remember any other game putting your health at the bottom middle of the screen. Like normally that's like a compass or something or just nothing. I don't know. It's just super weird to me, but your your weapon and everything is still down in the bottom right, which makes sense. That's where it was in the original game. So I don't know why it, it's just weird to me, but whatever. Uh, we also got to see uh, Snake doing first person view and he was cocking his gun and it just looks so good. Um, there were some interviews that came out and everything is part of this as well. And we found out that the team that's working on this game is a mixture of MS, 
MGS3 OGs and new talent. Some of the quotes I saw in the previews were that the game, quote, stays true to the original and that they have, quote, clear reference for the original work. So we did find out that Kojima and the original team are all credited in the game. It does not say a Hideo Kojima game or directed by Hideo Kojima, but it does say originally directed by Hideo Kojima. <clears throat> Obviously, it has nothing to do with this game. But it's glad I'm I'm glad they at least put his name in there. Um Konami was asked by I think it was VGC, but I can't remember. They were asked if there's gonna be an online mode because the original Metal Gear Solid 3 substance, I think, came with Metal Gear Online 2. Um, and they also asked about is there gonna be a new game plus option? And Konami said no comment to both. My guess is they're not going to do a new Metal Gear Online. I think if people are hoping for that, they're they're going to be very disappointed. Um, new Game Plus, I assume it will be there, but I don't know. I'm really interested to see what the trophies are going to be. If they're like the original Metal Gear Solid 3 trophies were on PS3 or the, the HD collection, which is harder. Not impossible, but definitely harder. Um, or the, the Metal Gear Volume 1, whatever the hell the thing's called. Yeah. Uh... The demo, so everybody that played the demo, it was locked at the 30 frames per second fidelity mode, which apparently looks absolutely gorgeous. But they did confirm there is a performance mode, 60 frames per second. I'm pretty sure we knew that already, but everybody was talking about it, so I figured I'd put it in here. As long as I've been talking about Metal Gear Solid 3 getting a remake, I've always said all I want it to do is have be Metal Gear Solid 3, but look a lot prettier and have Metal Gear Solid 5's controls. The next note I have right here is the gameplay is said to feel sim similar to Metal Gear Solid 5. It looks incredible running in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, in cutscenes, you can zoom in. They said you can actually see like every pore in Snake's skin. I'm like, well, I, that's cool. I don't really care, but I just want it to look good and look pretty. Um, oh, so Snake's initial bag. So, you know, when you land for the virtuous mission, you climb up the tree, you go over the branch. <clears throat> And there's your pack. You grab it and you fall down. It's got everything from the original, but now it's got a comes with a compass and a, an indicator for your objective. And I don't really understand that because it's pretty straightforward where you're going and what you need to do. So I don't really know what that means, but I don't know. I'm interested to see it. Uh, all the characters that are in the game, quote, look fantastic end quote and they stay true to the original designs now i do wonder if that means they've changed the way the boss looks because something was just off with her when we got the first look at her um <clears throat> it's not a big deal but like because i think every, every everyone else we saw looks perfect snake ocelot uh the little bit we could see uh sokolov in the background in one of those so hopefully they're going to fix her, but it's not like a deal breaker for me. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. So they're adding quick menus for your camo. So you can select like five or six different favorite camos and you can bring up a menu and just go, it pops up on the screen. You click it, boom, you're done. You don't have to go into all the menu. You can still go into the menus and stuff, but you can do it quickly. There's also a quick menu for the codec and the radio, which is cool. So I wonder if that means on the codec, if you do the quick menu, if you can walk around while you're listening to something like, obviously that'll be different than like the cutscene based, you know, codec conversations that that's different. But I wonder if you're just calling like Sigint or something for advice, if you can just hear them while you're walking around, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, still no uh, details on the cure menu, which is the one thing that I do hope they do something. If you can, <clears throat> I don't have a problem with the cure menu because I, I just don't care. It's my favorite game ever. It's the one thing that's not perfect in it. If it just behaves the same as it always did, whatever it's, I would like it to improve somehow. And I think it probably will, but who knows? Uh, previewer said that you're able to cover snake in mud and dirt by rolling around in the mud and the dirt. And it raises your camo index significantly. Somebody said that like they were just rolling around in the muck for as long as they could. And then they like crawled up right next to an alligator or a crocodile. And it was just like, 
didn't see them because they were just covered in it. There was just like, it was just a big mud thing there. That's awesome. Uh, snake can crouch walk like Metal Gear Solid five. You now roll with a dedicated button that Sean has written down as trapezoid, but it is actually triangle. And you can, that seems that's different, right? Dive to the ground from a standing position. I feel like I could see square rolling. I could see X rolling. I could see circle rolling. Triangle seems like the weirdest button of the face buttons to roll. Yeah, like, I don't get it. It, it should be does circle. Not, does not jive in my head. I <clears throat> They're doing so much quality of life stuff here. Hopefully you can change that. I mean, maybe it'll make sense when I'm playing it. But yeah, triangle is never... Like we've got unwritten rules of video games that like circle is always your roll dodge button. It just is. Yeah. Why would it be triangle now? I don't understand. Um, the keratin frogs are back. The 64 <laughs> frogs that you shoot and they go, wah, 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 wah. but now there's Gacko. I don't know how you say this. G a dash K O ducks that are in camouflage. They're wearing like ghillie suits. So there'll be a trophy for finding all of them as well. Um, I think that's cool. So the game still starts asking you, you know, what kind of a metal gear fan are you? I like metal gear solid. I like metal gear solid too. I like metal gear solid three. Well, now they've added, I like Peace Walker, I like Metal Gear Solid 4, and I like Metal Gear Solid 5. Each one will give you a different bonus and have some Easter eggs. Yes, if Raiden's say, mask is still in it. If you say you like Metal Gear Solid 4, does the game just crash? No, it's you just watch it the rest of the time. <laughs> you only get to play for like a half hour, and then there's 10 hours of cutscenes. Um, But yeah, the Raiden mask is still in there, which is cool. So I, they didn't have any screenshots of that. I can't wait to see what that looks like. Um, they did say there is no load times. So smooth. But there are still transitions between areas. They they talked to the producer of it, and he said, you know, we thought about making it just a seamless world, but it just didn't it, it didn't feel right because they're trying to stay as, as true to the original as they can while just updating everything. Well, that's why is, I was wondering when it was talking about like the compass and showing your objective. I'm like, is it going to be a little more open worldy now? And that's why that is necessary. But no, that's uh, what I'm saying. That's and that's why the objective thing doesn't really make sense because you just <laughs> you go along a path. I mean, there's some you can go different ways sometimes, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I've played it so many times that I can't imagine needing an objective marker, but. Who knows? Um, I'm fine with the transition staying because I'm so used to, like, in my memory, when I think of Metal Gear Solid 3 and I go from this area to the bridge, it's like Dramucci North, you know, fades in, fades out. Um, and they did say a release date reveal is coming later this year, hopefully at Tokyo Game Show. I'm seeing rumors that there may be a, because PlayStation is going to be there, um, there may be a playable demo of this at TGS. So I was thinking about flying over there real quick. Um, and there's rumors that it may, the game actually may get a demo period. Um, if it does, uh, I'm not going to play it. I, I think say, you will. I say that I, I don't want to play it. I just want to wait, but I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can stop myself. Um, so Sean, we got a lot of info there. What are your thoughts on Metal Gear Solid Delta? I know you can't be as hyped as I am, but <clears throat> what do you think about everything we've learned so far about this game? I mean, I haven't heard anything that I don't like. Um, I did really like the original until I tried to play it again more recently and I just couldn't. So if you fix, honestly, if you fix that and nothing else, I'm pretty excited for it. So um, <clears throat> I'm sure it'll be a day one for me, but yeah, I, I can't, I can't match your hype level, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. I really still think there's a chance it comes out this year because again, this November is the 20th anniversary. I think it came out November 17th. Don't quote me on that. Uh, you probably can't quote me. I think that's right. But anyways, it the fact that they revealed the collector's edition and all that crap a few months ago at this point 
and that now everybody's going hands on. Th- this game seems like it's basically done, except for polishing. It seems very far along. Exactly. Yeah. And we don't really know how long they've been working on this. I think there's a chance it's out in November. I really do. Um, I hope so. And then, sorry, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I don't think you're going to win Game of the Year. Is it weird that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth was this year? Yeah, I still think that's my Game of the Year by default, but I'm like, I've already kind of forgotten about it. Like, I know, I know it was awesome, but it just seems like forever ago. I and was I don't over think the moon. I've played anything since that would realistically overtake it. And so I don't know. I'm still just kind of like by default, that's my game of the year. But I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't seem like that was even this year. It's so weird. It's so weird. Well, yeah, I'm obviously hyped. Uh hopefully at Tokyo Game Show, we're gonna get a release date. Hopefully it's this year. I don't know though. Next year, we've got more than enough to play for crying out loud. Next year is going to be insane already. <clears throat> so we'll see. All right, Sean, next up, Gamescom came and went. But the only thing, I think it came and went. Is it still going? I don't even know how long Gamescom is. But uh, Jeff Keeley, he did another show. Um, and it was, a, it was a Keeley show, all right? Sean and I were, we both decided not to watch it. I was like, I'll catch afterwards. I'll catch the things I care about. And we're going to go over that now. Just some highlights. I'm not going to go through everything because once again, Gilly showed like 150 games. Um, but they kicked off the show with a new game announcement, which I don't think there was any at Summer Game Fest, at least any that anybody cared about. Borderlands 4 coming out 2025 only on current gen and PC. Thank you very much. Not for me, but obviously this is a big deal. Randy Pitchford's been hinting at this when uh, he said on Twitter something like when the when the movie came out and bombed so badly, he's like, oh, so you what you guys are saying, you really like the, the game, like you really like it. Well, we're working on something for you, F-O-U-R-U. I'm like, okay, dude, obviously. We knew Borderlands 4 was coming anyways, but that pretty much gave it away. I forget, have you played the Borderlandses? I've played one or maybe two of them like i don't think i ever paid for them so whatever's been a ps plus game i've maybe fired up and played a little bit but none of them ever really i will admit they're they're cool like i get why people like them but i couldn't get into it yeah they're not for me i just don't care about looter shooters the only one i've really tried to get into was destiny and even that by the time i try to get into it it was it was just too late because I don't even know how to I don't even know how to just play the campaign in Destiny 2 at this point. Uh Goat Simulator, the original one, is getting remastered and it's coming out this year. Um, this is just funny to me because there was Goat Simulator and then there was Goat Simulator 3. And <laughs> I don't even I think Goat Simulator came out I don't know why I said it like that. Came out on PS3, I want to say, so it doesn't even really need to be remastered, but whatever. Um Casey was actually, before I came up here, he was down there playing Goat Simulator 3, and he did some secret thing to where the goat is, like, the goat must be, like, I don't know, 50 feet tall, and he's just, like, he's he's got, like, shoes that are, like, houses or something, and he's just, and he he loves that game so much. Um, So I will probably end up having Goat Simulator remastered on my PlayStation, even if I never touch it. Uh, The next thing I have here is Dying Light, the Beast, was revealed. Dying Light uh, and Dying Light 2, of course, are previous games from Techland, I want to say. First person, zombie. uh, What's the thing where you jump around stuff? You jump over stuff? Parkour. Parkour. (laughs) It's a part. And so this originally, I guess, started out as DLC for Dying Light 2, but it got expanded and expanded. Now it's its own game, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but it's not for me, but dying lights, a big deal. Uh, Genshin impact is finally coming to Xbox November 20th. I don't know why it hadn't been there yet. I don't know. Sony paid for some kind of console exclusivity or whatever, but I don't know. There's part of me that almost wants to play this game just to I, I just don't even know. I've it's crossed my mind just to see what, 
the big deal is, but I never actually pulled the trigger. Yeah. Like it looks like Breath of the Wild, but it's like a free to play open world action adventure game that like I said, free to play, but then it's gotcha mechanics. And I don't even know what gotcha is, even although it's like gotcha. Like I don't know. I, I don't know if it's like a double entendre there, the double entendres. The league is amazing. God, it shows so good. Um, but that's coming up. Uh Monster Hunter Wilds. Got a new gameplay trailer. Still just says it's coming out in 2025. Do you care about Monster Hunter? No. If I play Monster Hunter, it it won't be Wilds or Worlds. It'll be the other one that's supposed to be a lot easier to get into. Now I can't remember the name of it. Monster Hunter Sunbreak. No, Sunbreak's the DLC. I don't remember what the name of it is. Uh, Got another trailer for Fatal Fury, City of the Wolves. I think they debuted my... Or may <clears throat> you say her name Mai, right? I don't know. Mai Sharon, you or whatever her name is. Yeah, I don't know. I never really thought about it. I think I always called it Mai because it's M A I, like a sigh, you know? I think I would say Mai, yeah. The Mai Mai's in <clears throat> Link Between Worlds. Uh, but it's out April 24, 2025. As much as I'm so happy that we're getting a Fatal Fury game, don't let me buy this. I spent 70 bucks or whatever on Street Fighter 6, and I played it on the, the stream we did, and then I played a few matches separate from that, and that's it. I, I've played Street... Since Street Fighter 6 came out, I've probably played just screwing around Street Fighter 30th anniversary more than I have Street Fighter 6. <laughs> so don't let me get Fatal Fury City of the Wolves, but I'm so excited that it's coming out. It just doesn't even make any sense. Side Myers, did you do that? No. Sid Myers, Civ Seven. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I did that. His name is Side Meyer. Civ Seven is coming out February eleventh. Um, I don't know. What about Metal Gear Solid Acid? I don't like card games. I'm just sorry, guys. I'm going back to the chat now. Uh, Man Twenty Five is Game of the Year. James, shut up. And I'm glad that your Cowboys won a Super Bowl. It's nice that you can finally win one. Um, probably be Assassin's Creed Shadows or Star Wars. Star Wars not looking great. Seventy six, seventy seven on Metacritic. Not great, but doesn't matter if you're excited for it. You're excited for it. Uh, yeah, Sidemire Civilizations out February 11th. Starfield, it was announced they get a free Rev 8 DLC. It's a vehicle. It's like a car thing you can drive. And I've seen so many videos of just this stupid, th that, that <clears throat> game is so screwed up. And just the physics, it's like nothing. It, I, I don't get Bethesda games and I never will. They're not for me. Uh, Shattered Space got a release date, September 30th. I'm pretty sure we knew that already. Or maybe it was rumored to be September. Yeah, I don't know if we had a specific date. Maybe it was just September or fall or whatever. <clears throat> uh, Marvel Rivals getting a full release on December 6th. The all, they, they say all heroes are unlocked and playable from the beginning. Free to play hero shooter where you play as superheroes. I kind of think I might try this out. It's third person. I don't think it's first person, but it's still all multiplayer team based stuff. I'm probably just going to get my butt kicked. But I've heard a lot if of good it was things. Anything other than Marvel, I don't think I would care at all. <laughs> oh, but because of it's Marvel, I'm at least like, eh, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we got our first gameplay trailer for Arkham Shadow, the VR game that's not coming to PSVR two. Um, coming out in October. It looks cool, but I just don't care because I can't play it. The only Batman game we can play on PSVR, well, we can't even play it on PSVR too, but it was just like, didn't you didn't, didn't you just like put the mask on and then you throw batarangs and you like investigate a crime scene or something? Because you got it, right? I never played it, no, but I think that's basically what it was. Yeah. A uh, few more things here. Little Nightmares 3 was announced. No date, release window at all, which means they don't even think it's coming out next year. So that's gonna be interesting but people are very hyped for that i've never played either of the first two games but we'll see and then we got a trailer for indiana jones and the great circle and a release date of december 9th oh also it's coming to ps5 spring 2025 hashtag colin was right holy shit afterwards phil spencer uh i can't remember who he was talking to but he did an interview where they asked him about indy coming over to ps5 so quickly and he said, quote, 
By the way, let me know if you think this is just a bunch of word salad. Quote, we have to anticipate there's going to be more change in some of the traditional ways that games are built and distributed. That's going to change for all of us. But the end result has to be better games that more people can play. It's not going to change for all of you. Nintendo's not going to put their games on Xbox. PlayStation's not going to put God of War on Xbox. It's changing for you because you're losing. And Because you need, I mean... <clears throat> you got to make money somehow and you're not going to make it with game pass. So you spent $70 billion to get call of duty on game pass. I just, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I, I see the trailers for this and I just like, I don't, I still, I, I can't wrap my head around this being a first person game. Now that we know it's coming to PS five. What do you think? I'm excited for it. Like, I don't know. I'm still not entirely sure I'll get it, but I'm glad to know that I have the option, I guess is kind of where I'm at. Like, I think I'm probably going to get it, but it may depend on what else is. I mean, we'll know all about it because it'll be on Xbox for a while. So we'll know if it's any good. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not fully in yet, but I'm at least glad to know that I'll have a chance to get it if I wanted it. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I as cool as it, this is that it's coming over, I wish they would just put the Master Chief collection. I mean, uh, of course, that's I, I think it's gonna happen at some point. That's also gonna be probably the weirdest like weirder than seeing when Sonic first appeared on GameCube, I guess it would have been, or or Game Boy Advance, whatever got him first to Sega Kids. That was the weirdest thing ever. Seeing Master Chief on PlayStation will be weirder than than Sonic, you know. Because yeah. that's just like that's 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 Xbox. I don't know, man. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. And the last reveal, Mafia: The Old Country, was revealed with more info coming in December. Which, of course, if it's coming in December, Keeley's saying, "Hey, tune into my other show, and I'll give you more information there." So it's a mafia game set basically in the Wayback Machine in Italy. That does not sound fun to me. I've never played any of the Mafia games, but I don't really care. I've got Mafia 3 in my library because it was free on PS Plus at some point. Um, and that was supposed to be pretty good, but I was like, if I want to play an open world crime game, I'll probably just play through GTA 5 again until 6 comes out, you know? Yeah. Um, so again, opening night live, not the best show ever. Any thoughts you want to share, Sean? Other than what we've said already, share Sean. I mean, it was a whole lot of nothing as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. I guess Borderlands is a big deal. I'm sure people are happy about it. Uh, Indie coming to PS5 is, I guess, a big deal too. But hmm. <laughs> this could have been an email. Every Keeley show could be an email. <laughs> Uh, James says reviewers have a hate boner for Ubisoft. They usually review low. I will say, I think <laughs> freaking uh, Phoenix rising. I love that game. I think it was like a 73, 74 on Metacritic, something way too low. Um, so that makes sense. I, I do agree with you there, James. All right. Today, as we're recording this Tuesday, we had two Nintendo. Well, it's one Nintendo show, but it was broken up into two parts. And we're going to go through that now. Nintendo announced yesterday they were doing a indie and partner direct today. And my thoughts were, I don't care about partner directs because I only, I only care about my switch when it comes to Nintendo games, not partner games. There was a lot in the partner showcase that I was very excited for because I got to remember, <laughs> Oh yeah, a lot of this stuff can still come to PlayStation. So First, though, let's go through the indie world highlights. Uh, Bellatro, which I've still got sitting on my PS5. I got it for free with the PlayStation Stars stuff. At some point, I'm going to get to that game this year. I've heard nothing but amazing things. I want to play it, but it is getting uh, a free update that came out today that has uh, Witcher, Vampire <laughs> Survivors, Dave the Diver, and Among Us collaborations as part of the game. I got to get. I, I got to play Bellatro at some point. People like have been getting addicted to it, that, that, that it's that good. So I, I want to play it at some point. We'll see. Neva or Neva, never going to come out. I don't know. I think this is the game 
when I saw the screenshots, I was like, oh yeah, this is the game with the one, like the dog, the 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 dog wolf deer thing. Remember that the big white dog wolf deer thing? I think it's that <laughs> game, but it's coming out October fifteenth. Uh, next up, I just put this in here because I wanted to say that Kwafi Tuak, Tokyo. I don't know what happened with the Tokyo word. Uh, that's coming out in 2025. I got the platinum in the original. Wait, seriously? Or are you bullshitting me? No, I did. You did? That was, um, I think it was right before, I want to say Elden Ring. I think Elden Ring was my 75th platinum. And I think I was sitting at 73. I'm like, I don't want Elden Ring to be my 74th. So I was looking on PS Plus or something for like easy platinums. And I saw that. So I knocked that one out. I was like, okay, now I can go kill Melania and finish up Elden Ring and have that be my 75th. <clears throat> that being said, I don't care about this. Yeah. On PSN profiles, 56% of the people got the platinum. So I guess it's pretty easy. It's just like a, a, a visual novel, right? I yeah, think. there's like a story to it. But it's told through like making coffee drinks for people and oh, I want something sweet, but not too sweet, but kind of fruity. And then you like go through your recipes and you make them the drink. And I don't know. Yeah, I don't <laughs> don't think I really care about that. Um maybe I should go back. Just it, it's coffee talk. Like I feel like I should get the I should get the trope. I should get the platinum for this just because it's you know just a little coffee talk. It's like butter. Is that what he says also? Yes. Yes. Uh this one I'm very excited for. I don't know anything about it, but Sea of Stars is getting free DLC in the spring. Throws of the Watchmaker. That game is what got me to finally play turn play turn based RPGs. I freaking love it. It is amazing. And the fact that it's getting free DLC is crazy. Like the messenger got DLC, the, the beach panic thing, but was that free or was that paid? Actually, no, I think that might've been free also. Really? I thought it was. I definitely paid, played it. Maybe not. I never beat it. Like most DLCs, I never beat them, but I at least played it. So it was probably free because I'm cheap. Um, uh, next thing I had here, Power Wash Simulator. The DLC keeps on coming. This time, Shrek. Okay, did you see something? I'm trying to think of what it was. Um, <clears throat> I think it was just posted by, it was a tweet or a, a zeet or a whatever. A post. Um, that Power Wash, I'm going to say that Power Wash, the Power Wash Simulator account posted now i want to see if i can find it but there was um it was like a tease of like some upcoming stuff or something i don't know if it was a video or a picture but <clears throat> maybe it was like a screenshot from a video i can't remember what the context was you're but... killing me what is it <laughs> well, i'm i'm you're burying the lead i'm i'm what's the word you're stalling because yes. I'm trying to find it on Twitter real quick and I can't. Um, but anyways, there was a picture and then up in the corner was this airplane that looked very cuphead like. And people were like, oh, my God, is Power Wash going to get a cuphead DLC? I can't even. And I don't know that. if that's what they were going for. Um, but that would get me like that. I would play. Uh, oh, here it is. Oh, Wario tweeted it. Uh, on August 1st, he said, next Power Wash Simulator DLC tease. And like, I don't remember this particular thing from Cuphead, but that looks very Cuphead. That's 100% looks like Cuphead. And so, like, Shrek, eh. I mean, what the hell? Cuphead DLC... Or VR will oh get God. me back into that game. Other than that, I loved it, but I don't need to wash anything else. But if it was like, if you could power wash like a Cuphead cartoony world, like, I can't. I don't know how picture. that would work. I don't yeah. think Cuphead really translates to 3D no. environments very well. But if they pulled that off somehow, I'd be all for it. <clears throat> I still think I might 
try for the PS4 Platinum. Really? My, I, I couldn't go through that whole game again. My 80 no. hours on PS5 wasn't enough. Um, Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> but it's just funny that it's getting Shrek DLC. And the last announcement I wrote down here, uh, Pizza Tower is out today on Switch, and this game is supposed to be phenomenal. Um, I think it was only out on Steam before this. I don't know if this... I didn't see if this is coming to PlayStation and Xbox as well, but Pizza Tower is supposed to be really good. Um, so that's cool that it's coming out to Switch. Anything about Indie World there, Sean? Um, I mean, there's some cool stuff. Um, I couldn't watch this, but I was also like, I always watch these in case Silk Song gets announced. And oh, yeah, I forgot does. to say there was no Silk Song at the freaking game. So in Games my mind, Con. I'm like, well, if I don't watch it, maybe Silk Song will get announced, and it still did. But we did get some some cool stuff out of it. I'm still gonna draft it next year. I don't care. The, the game has to come out at some point. At this point, I'm pot committed. I'm drafting it every year. It's gonna <clears> replace <throat> my first round pick again. It was surprisingly light on the typical anime style, all look the same kind of games that are usually shown at these Switch events. So there's that at least. So, yeah. Well, next up, they went right into the partner showcase. And this is where things for me got fun. Tetris Forever was announced. It's coming out later this year. It includes a Tetris documentary and nine different games. <clears throat> there's tetris 3 in this i didn't know tet i knew tetris 2 was a thing which how do you ever make a sequel to tetris whatever i remember tetris 2 on nes and game boy and everything i didn't know there was ever a tetris 3 based on the logo it looks like it was japan only or russia there only was a maybe? tetris game on super nintendo that i think brent had attack i don't think it was just called tetris 3 so maybe it was something else but... it might have been tetris attack which is supposed to be pretty good. Oh, uh, that sounds familiar. That was probably it. I can't. I think that's more kind of like a Puyo Puyo game where it's like you attacking the other player, kind of like what you ended up doing with Tetris 99, you know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but this sounds cool. I assume this is going to be coming out on everything. Uh, but one thing that won't be coming out on everything, NES Tetris was announced coming out on Switch Online this winter. I feel like it's weird Ow. that this... Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be licensing. A game that is on pretty much... It has been every single generation, there's been a Tetris game. There's been 100 different Tetris games across 30 different systems, probably. And you have the Switch Online that it took seven years to get Tetris. Like, I will never understand how they have botched Switch Online so badly. All right, I got to look this up because I wonder, <clears throat> I think, okay, thank you. Nintendo published Tetris on Nintendo. So it's not like they had to go get go find Tengen or something and get them right. to give them the rights. They published it. So why the hell was this not already there? Because Nintendo, I don't know. I think it's the best Tetris. That's just nostalgia. And I haven't really played Tetris, Tetris Effect. I haven't played it in VR yet or anything, but NES Tetris to me is just, it's gold, Jerry, gold. Uh, speaking of Goat Simulator, Goat Simulator 3 is now out on Switch. I can't imagine that runs very well, even though it is com a completely stupid, ridiculous game. <laughs> I can't picture that running well on current Switch. Oh yeah, and before this, they did announce that on both of these shows, they will not talk about the Switch. Anytime they announce anything, they have to say, we're not talking about the Switch successor. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <clears throat> and then this announcement came, which got another amazing reaction video from Maximilian Dude. Capcom Fighting Collection 2 was announced, including Capcom versus SNK 1 and 2, Project Justice, which I don't think I've ever heard of, Capcom Fighting Evolution, which I think is some kind of crossover fighter, Street Fighter 3 Alpha Upper. Now, this game is only available in Japan. This is one of the ones that I think made him really freak out. Alpha Upper, I think, was only available. I can't remember if it was in arcades, but it was definitely only out in Japan, and I think it might have only been available on Saturn, I want to say. But this is like the definitive, out of all the Alpha games and all the different versions, this is supposed to be the best. Wait, I almost... so is it Street Fighter 3 Alpha, or is it Street Fighter Alpha 3? Oh, I wrote Alpha it wrong. 3? 
Alpha three. Did you okay. screw that up or did I? No, I didn't touch okay. that. I was like, wait, no. is this like okay? So it's Street, Street, Street Fighter Alpha. I I remember looking at it going Alpha Upper. That seems weird, <laughs> but okay. No, it's Street Fighter Alpha three Upper. Street Fighter. Okay, so is it the equivalent of like a uh, like Street Fighter two? turbo is that what the upper does it's just like it's basically alpha three but it's like the definitive cool version can... of alpha three like maybe akuma is selectable from the beginning and there's other okay. like gameplay tweaks and stuff that are, it's supposed to be the best alpha version that there is and then plasma sword i've never heard of and then power stone one and two i do have to say i didn't even know there was a power stone two and i've heard nothing but amazing things about power stone i have to admit i've never played it <clears throat> Did you ever play it? Because nope. I think it only came home on Dreamcast back then. We didn't have a Dreamcast, but coming out in 2025, no date yet, but this is pretty cool. And then right after this, we finally got a release date for Marvel vs. Capcom, the fighting collection. It's out September 12th digitally. If you want the physical version, you got to wait till November. I think a lot of people are going to be buying this twice because <laughs> they want to have it physically so that they can never get it taken away, but they also just want to play it on September 12th like me, are you down for a stream on September 12th or somewhere around there? Yes. I can't wait. I'm so excited. And I don't even know how to play these games. I, I've never, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even care. I'm so excited for this. I cannot wait. <laughs> Sweek it in one and two HD remaster. It's coming out March 6th. I'm sorry, Derek. That was Derek's game, right? He was the one Yeah. mad. Um, Looks cool. I, I feel like this game was supposed to come out last year. Th this is the new Silk Song, except it actually has a date. Dragon Quest 3 HD it's dated for November 14th. Are you in on this? I feel like no, this is made for I you. mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm but interested. it's also like a few days after Mario and Luigi comes out also. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on. <clears throat> I think it looks beautiful. It's not for me. Um, I don't think, but whatever. What is for me is Castlevania Dominus Collection. What the hell is Dominus? Where did this word come from? Did did you look that up to where why this is called that? No, but why I assume just... it has something to do with those games. Maybe there's, uh, I don't know. It's the DS collection is what it is. So the three uh, Metroidvania Vanias that came out on DS are included in this Portrait of Ruin, Order of Ecclesia, Dawn of Sorrow, which I don't know the stories for the other two, but in Dawn of Sorrow, you do play Soma again. And Area of Sorrow from the GBA collection was freaking fantastic. I cannot wait. I'm downloading this. I'm going to play it tomorrow. I don't, as much as I want to play Dawn of Sorrow, I think I should just play them in order. Because if I play Dawn of Sorrow first and then I, I go would, back yeah. to the first one, I'm going to get screwed. <clears throat> But these, I remember when I went back to try to play the original, the, the first one on the GBA collection, I can't remember what it was. It was just brutal. Whereas these, all three of these are fantastic games. Um, also, Haunted Castle Remastered. Horrible name. Apparently, it's a remake of the Castlevania arcade game. Okay. Now, is the Castlevania arcade game what Castlevania 1 was like attempting to be, or they're totally separate? I think is that like the Contra arcade and then Contra NES? I think so. So it's like they they similar but different. <clears throat> um and then I watched the trailer for this and it's cool because I was like, oh wait a minute, we got these are all DS games. What are they gonna do about the bottom screen? Well, there's a multi-display layout that you can configure. Um, so you've got the gameplay, and then you can put up like in the top right, you can put your uh your map. And then in the bottom, you can have like your status thing. So you see what level you are and everything. Um, I think it's super cool that you can customize it and stuff. Uh, obviously, there was touch controls in the original game. Now you can just use the controller. I saw at one point in the trailer, like you like throw a bird or something, and then it would go like through these ice blocks to break them. And instead of doing your little stylus thing, now you just go. So that's good. Um it has a quick save, so you don't have to get to save rooms, which I love, but I also think that's kind of weird for Metroidvania. The whole point is you're supposed yeah. to be stressed out getting to the save room. Yeah, I feel like that you lose a little bit with that, but... 
But again, oh, well. but you don't have to use it. I will because I suck at games, but <laughs> uh, also concept art and music tracks are included. 25 bucks. Steal. I'm there. I cannot wait to play this. Um, also, and then the Switch showing that they can release games that were originally on a dual screen device on the Switch. So it's almost like Link Between Worlds would be perfect on Switch. Yeah. Maybe it can't run on Switch. Maybe they're just waiting for Switch 2. <laughs> and the last thing, I don't care, but I just didn't think this game would ever come out on Switch or be able to run on Switch, but Yakuza Kiwami coming out on Switch October 24th. Wario tweeted out a funny article. Did you see this that he tweeted? This screenshot of an article from like two or three years ago where there's like, eh. Sega was like, I, I mean, the Switch is really just for like little kids and stuff. And I don't think it would be great if we put something like Yakuza out on Switch. So it's never going to come there. And now here it is. Also, <laughs> no Silk Song release date because God hates me and my fantasy draft. Sean. This was way better than I thought it was going to be. Again, I didn't care at all about the partner stuff. The Capcom Fighting Collection 2 is probably the coolest thing in here for me. Oh, no, it's definitely the Castlevania Collection and then the Fighting Collection yeah. just because of a couple of those games. But I thought this was, a for not being like a full-blown like Nintendo E3 kind of a show, this was pretty damn strong, I thought. I mean, I feel like I've gotten to the point with PlayStation now where anytime there's a PlayStation event, which are few and far between... If there's one announcement I'm excited about, I'm happy. That's where I'm at now. So even if it's nothing other than the Castlevania collection, like that's all I need. I'm super stoked for that. So that's it's a win in my book. all I need. James <laughs> says Tetris 99 is sick. It was sick. I sucked at it. I tried F-099. That was like, I'm not, I'm not made for this. I I'm never not. even played it. I'm not good at this. Last but not least on the news list, this is two episodes in a row. We were able to talk res sales results. This is another <laughs> good thing of just going every two weeks. All right. So we got the NPD slash Circana results for July and they were mind blowing, but also not surprising at all. Number one, college football, 25, number one, of course. However, number two is the EA sports MVP bundle, which is you can buy together College football and Madden. One and two. Unreal. We'll get into more stats about them here in a minute. Elden Ring still hanging strong at number three, two years after it came out, thanks to the Shadow of the Earth Tree. Number four, Modern Warfare 3. Number five, Minecraft. I don't know why that's so high. It's just weird. Number six, Nintendo World Championships. And now remember, this only counts physical in the US for Nintendo. They don't release digital numbers. This game is not supposed to be that great from what I've heard. And I'm kind of glad I didn't end up buying it. <clears throat> but it's number six. It's just you put if Nintendo puts out something on Switch, it will debut in the top 10 no matter what. Yep. Hogwarts Legacy, number seven, number eight, MLB The Show 24, number nine, EA FC 24, and number 10, Spider-Man 2 on PS5 and PS4. Year to date, I think I said this might be possible, but I think I said eh, it'll probably be number two. The College Football 25 debuts knocking off Helldivers 2 in the U.S. as the best-selling game of the year. I think I said it could be number one. And yeah. you're like, eh, I don't know, Helldivers, but... Yeah. I mean, I thought it was a long shot, but it did it. That's crazy. So Helldivers 2 is two. Modern Warfare 3 is three. Dragon's Dogma 2 is four. Again, I feel like we have... Dragon's Dogma 2 only showed up in the top 10 the first month it was out, but somehow it's number four for the year. <laughs> it's just super weird to me. Number five, debuting this month also because of College Football 25, the EA MVP bundle. What I'm interested to see is if College Football... Is the top three going to be, for after August, is it going to be College Football, Madden, and the bundle? Year that to date? insane. It's crazy. College football is a beast. I, I can't, it's like the amount of money they're making on this thing. And I hope they don't just turn it into Madden where every year it's just like the same exact thing. <clears throat> they probably will, but at least for this year, it's super fun because we haven't had it in forever. Number six, year to date, Zelden Ring. Number seven, MLB The Show 24. Number eight, WWE 2K24. That blows my mind. 
Number nine, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And number 10, Tekken 8. Surprising as well. So overall in July, video game spending in the U.S. was up 10% year over year. Just in the consoles alone, 29% increase in spending. College Football 25 has been credited as the main driver for increased software sales and hardware across both PS5 and Xbox. Launch month... Launch... Damn it. (laughs) Launch month revenue... For college football 25 more than tripled the lifetime dollar sales of the best selling college football game previously, which was NCAA football 07. In one month, they tripled the money made for the previous best selling college football game. Let that sink in, let it in the door. This is like, I I don't ever. It's going to be interesting though is next year are the players going to be pushing for more than we know how much money you're going to make off this you better give us more than a hundred dollars a piece or whatever it was 600 bucks in a free game (laughs) yeah also let us edit our stats (laughs) so kevin can stop complaining um yeah just the the biggest the the biggest football the, the biggest sports release i can remember at least in the u.s in a really a long ass time. Like, cause it, we're, we're just used to Madden every year. MLB, the show every year, NBA 2k every year. They're all NBA 2k is always good. Madden always sucks and whatever college football. I, I don't remember a game, a sports game, just taking over <clears throat> video games the way this did. And of course it's because it hasn't been out forever, but still hardware spending was what 12% compared to last year. PS five saw a 25% increase. Xbox series saw a 48% increase in hardware sales. Again, college football 25. Again, I will also say, I bet PlayStation and Microsoft are just like, thank you for only putting this on current gen. Yeah. Madden still comes out on last gen. This did not. So I almost wonder if that means like next year, Madden will also be current gen only. I wonder if they'll finally get rid of the PS4 and X-Bone versions next year. And of course, for July, PS5 was number one in units sold and dollars sold. But... (laughs) Xbox Series was number two in units and dollars sold, knocking Switch out of the number two spot for units, as has been the case every month before. Um, anything you want to say, Sean? Really, I just want to put in this here to just talk about what a freaking gargantuan success College Football 25 has been. It's just, it's mind-blowing. I'm so happy. Yep. Now, Sean, it's time for the wrap-up. Oh, boy. It wasn't enough that we got details on Metal Gear Solid Delta. Death Stranding 2 is getting a, they're calling it, this is just hilarious, a special stage panel at Tokyo Game Show. Uh, Kojima will be there as well as the entire Japanese voice cast for the game. This game's definitely coming out next year. We don't need to worry about this getting delayed to 26 at this point. I'm pretty sure. And also, the first game came out in 19. I think six years is long enough to, to give us Death Stranding 2. Yeah. I just hope Kojima doesn't do what he does with every game. So as I'm saying that, I realize what's going to happen. Don't spoil the whole game in trailers, please. Black Myth Wukong, speaking of sales, ridiculous successes, Black Myth Wukong has already sold 10 million copies across the globe. Also set the Steam record for concurrence in one day. And people are like, oh, it's just because it was made in China and Chinese people are playing it. Yeah, they're proud of it. Who cares? Yeah, it still count. Who, I mean, yeah, who cares what the reason is? Also, a shit ton of people in the US are playing it as well. So like, don't be like that. That you're like your racism is showing <laughs> is is what I yeah. say to people that say that. Um also, I just saw this the other day Wario tweeted Steam itself set the record for most Steam players concurrently playing. Uh 37 million people on Sunday were on Steam actively playing games. Wow. Crazy. Final Fantasy 16, we talked about last week or last episode that there was like some patch update for some driver or something that mentioned Final Fantasy 16. It's now officially coming to PC September 17th. There's also a demo demo available now. Good. I hope a shit ton of people buy this. This game was so phenomenal. I still don't see how it's selling 3 million copies in the first week or something is a disappointment. Whatever. The game's phenomenal. Oh, I still got to play the DLC. Dang. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. 
Did I already you, own it. I bought the bundle when the first one came out. But you only played, played the first the second one. one. Yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII Remakes director has said that part three... Uh, d- 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 come on, man. Slow your roll. Final Fantasy VII Remake director says that part three will be among, quote, the most loved in the history of video games, end quote. He also said, quote, it will even beat any expectations you have for the game. Bro. You got to chill. I don't know about that. You got to chill. Rebirth was amazing. I still don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand what's happening at the end there. I'm not going to spoil anything. I don't know. The part three has got a lot to live up to, and I really am interested to see what they're going to do. Valve There's officially- also so much left in the game. Yeah. Like, I think in the first the North game, crater three or whatever. discs. I think we're only through the first disc right now. Like, there's so much. Li- and who knows what they're going to do with it. But like, right. I, I don't know. There's a lot to cover. Well, Valve officially revealed that they are making a new game. Does not have a three in the title. <clears throat> it's Deadlock. Uh, they officially revealed it after it's been in this friends and family <laughs> closed beta. Bless you. Um, for a long time and it just kept leaking. So they're finally like, okay, fine. Here it is. Yes. We're working on a hero shooter, six V six, third person hero shooter. <clears throat> Why? Why? Where's half-life three? Come on. <laughs> Silent Hill two. Bless you. This is where Sean, this is where he starts sneezing. <laughs> so it's a good thing. We're in the wrap up. Silent Hill 2 got a, around a 30 minute, I think it was like 27 minutes of uninterrupted <clears throat> gameplay. And a lot of people are now like, oh, this doesn't look like shit. And somebody, I can't remember if it was the creative director or whoever. Did you see this though? Of Bloober team was like, I don't know what the hell Konami has been doing, but everything they've been showing for this game is making it look bad and it's not bad. So then (laughs) they were so happy that this got out there and everybody's like, oh my God, this actually looks good. I think this is still a wait to see what the reviews say for me, but I'm, I've got a better chance of buying it now than I did before this. Are you? Yeah, I'm way? not. Okay. I'm not all in yet, but I'm feeling a lot better about it than I had been. <clears throat> also, the creative director said that the game, the the remake, is around 16 to 18 hours long. The original game was only around eight hours. I think eight hours is actually a perfect length for <laughs> Silent Hill games. So I don't know how I feel about that, but I think that's about what Resident Evil Four remake was, and that's. The, the best Resident Evil that's ever been made. So we'll see. Uh, on Monday, PlayStation's homepage for a little bit spoiled the release date for Lego Horizon Adventures as November 14th. But then, so I assumed it was going to be at the Switch Direct and it was not. I think they showed it in a montage, but there was no release date yet. But it's coming out November 14th, obviously. Do you care? Uh, I mean, short answer, no. But... Well, I mean... No, but I do still also wonder, not that it's going to make me get it, but like, is this just like your standard Lego game but set in the Horizon universe or is it closer to Horizon, just Lego graphics? If it's just like a normal, honestly, either way, I'm probably not going to get it. I don't. Yeah. But like normal Lego games are just so boring and like, so if it's just that, but in the Horizon universe, like. I'm I'm definitely good. If it's more of a legit game that just happens to be made with Legos, like I that could be fun, but I still don't think I'm in. Yeah, I don't know. All I know is that it's supposed to be a reimagining of the Horizon story for a younger audience. I've really only played the the Lego games. I've never played one all the way through. I've played like I remember. God, I want to say I'm like Wii U or no, it was probably PS3. I played a demo for Lego Jurassic World or no, that I guess that would have been PS4 because that movie came out in 2015. <laughs> I don't know, but it's just like they're just collectathons where you go through some stuff that's in the movies and it's funny. I'm like, I don't know. Right. It's basically you play through the movie. I mean, normally they're movie right. games and it's like, yeah, you play through the movie in Lego form and I don't know. We'll see. Uh, avowed, we found out last time that it was delayed until next year. Now we found out it's confirmed 
confirmed. That sounds like a weird word to say. But it's shooting for 30 frames per second on Xbox Series S and X. And their reason was this, quote, it's a first person single player game. You don't necessarily need that 60 frames. That allows us to get a lot juicier with the visual effects and lighting and all this other stuff. That was the quote, end quote. All this other stuff. Also, it's going to have more than 10 endings, which I guess that means 11. I hate when people say more than (laughs) X. It's so stupid. More than 13, but fewer than 15. Right. Um, What I think is weird about this, I think Avowed looks cool, but I don't think Avowed looks good, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. It doesn't seem like they're doing anything that would necess- necess- oh, shit. necessitate it being 30 frames and not 60, at least on Series X. So I don't get this. And I think because it's a first-person game, I think you do need those 60 frames, Mr. Art Director. I don't think you know what you're talking about. I don't know. Yeah, but they also have all this other stuff. Yes. And, quote, all this other stuff. You're a great art director, I'm I'm guessing. <clears throat> Uh, the new Xbox consoles, the versions, the Series S, Glacier White, the Series X, 2 terabyte, all that stuff. Uh, they finally got release dates October 15th. Or you can just keep your PS5 and play all the games over there. Uh, sea of Thieves has hit a million copies sold on PS5. So Microsoft, a Microsoft published game has sold a million copies on PS5. Obviously, Minecraft is Microsoft as well, and that's probably sold 100 million on PlayStation 4 and 5, whatever. But Sea of Thieves, a million sold. Yeah, they're going to bring everything on Xbox over to PlayStation. It's just printing money for them. And Microsoft loves their money. A uh, report came out that Activision reportedly canceled uh, before Toys for Bob was spun off. They canceled Crash Bandicoot 5. I guess the sales of... It's weird because the sales of the Insane Trilogy, I'm pretty sure I remember hearing that that sold like 20 million copies on the, the remake of the trilogy. But then Crash Bandicoot 4 apparently sold like crap. So they canceled crash five. They also canceled some kind of sequel for Tony Hawk. I don't know if they were going to remake more of the games or if it was going to be a new Tony Hawk game, but they canceled that so they can focus on live (laughs) service, which is awesome. I'm not, I don't care about crash bandicoot. I would rather crash bandicoot five existed than another live service game though. Yeah. And Tony Hawk. The Plucky Squire, which Sean is very happy about and I'm happy about also, got a release date September 17th. Also, if you got PS Plus Extra or Premium, you get it day one for free. Quote, unquote, free. No extra costs, I guess I should say. Um, This is perfect. I'm probably going to be done with the Platinum for Astrobot because I think that's, what, September 5th? This is perfect. This is like two palate cleansers in a row. I'm so excited to play both these games. I can't wait. Speaking of release dates, Dragon Age, the Veil Guard is out on Halloween. So happy one day after your birthday, Sean, present. I don't know what those words were. Um, Again, this just looks like Dragon Age Fortnite. I'm so interested to see what the reviews are for this. But if you're excited for it, it's out October 31st. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 has been delayed to February. I saw this, but I've never seen, I haven't seen anything more on it, but Bully has been rated in Taiwan on PS4, PS5, X-Bone, Series X and S, and PC. So I guess it's coming out, but I don't know if it's a remaster, if it's just the original, I don't know. Also, I don't know how Bully is going to be received now in this Yeah, we're, we're in a different world now. Yeah. <laughs> So that'll be interesting. Uh, Foam Stars is doing what it should have done to begin with. It's moving to free to play in October. <clears throat> it's dead already, so no one cares, but it's moving to free to play. Sonic 3 got a trailer, and apparently they're teaming up, spoiler alert, with Robotnik. Did you watch the trailer? And yeah. Keanu is officially shut. So now we've got we've got Jim Carrey, Idris Elba, and Keanu Reeves in Sonic 3. What the hell? It looks amazingly stupid. I can't wait. I did not expect them to team up with Robotnik to take down Shadow. But I think at the end, it's going to switch and they're all going to team up with Shadow to take down Robotnik. That's what I, I mean, it's so stupid, but it looks so good. I can't wait. <clears throat> also, a sentence I never thought I would say because this shouldn't be a sentence, but 
Eternal Champions, if you're a Sega kid, that was Genesis's, that was Sega's fighting game, six button answer to Mortal Kombat. It's like combining Mortal Kombat fatalities with Street Fighter, but it doesn't control anywhere near as well or look as good as either of those. Eternal Champions is getting a movie. What the F? Why? I miss that. What is happening? Who thinks a fighting game from 1993 that was a one-off, never got a sequel, got a version on Sega CD, but that's it. Like, is anybody thinking? I haven't thought about Eternal Champions <laughs> in like forever, probably since I played the, the Genesis Mini that had it. Like, we're, we're getting out of control with these video game adaptations. Last, but certainly not least, opening in Kyoto officially on October 2nd, there was a Nintendo Direct to show it. But the Nintendo Museum is real and spectacular and opening October 2nd in Kyoto. I want to go to Japan so badly. Yeah. And someday I will get there. It will be mine. Oh, yes, it will be mine. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this episode of the two-player co-op podcast. We might be back next week. We might not. Who knows? I know I'm going to hate my fantasy team in a week. But Sean, (laughs) until that time... Go ahead and take us out. Thank you for playing.